Okay, let me do a little bit of explaining. Because, to be honest, you really don't have to have this formula. If we are trying to figure out this, the length of this arc right here, okay, if we're trying to figure out the length of this arc, here's our angle, okay, and of course we have our radius. Now, without using this formula, can anybody tell me how you would go about figuring out the length of this arc if you know the radius and you know the angle? What's a way that you could figure out the length of that arc right there? That arc is a part of what of this circle? The circumference of the circle. It's part of the circumference of the circle. So we could figure out the entire circumference, right? And then figure out what um, portion of the circle this is. So say that we're 90 degrees, then this is a fourth of the circle. So if we do a fourth of the circumference to find the length of that arc. Well, guess what? By theta being in radians, that is taking care of the uh, kind of the ratio part of this. Okay, it's taking care of the ratio. Um, so we don't have to figure out the entire circumference and then figure out uh, what portion of the circle we're talking about as long as theta is in radians. And that is the thing that people always forget. Sometimes they give it to you in radians, but sometimes they give it to you in degrees. And if they do, you have to convert it first before you can use this formula. It's a very simple formula, but you have to remember that theta must be in radians. Okay? Um, so... S is the length of the arc, okay? Um, this is in the definition, but just labeling it on the equation here. R is, of course, your radius. And theta is the angle in radians. So again, it's a very simple equation. You just have to know the specifics in order to use it. So, here's the example. Let's look at a application because, I mean, let's be real. It's too easy to just plug in R and theta, okay? Um, we want to find the perimeter of a 60-degree slice of a large pizza, and in this case, a large has a 7-inch radius. Okay, depends on where you go. But for this pizza, we're saying that it has a 7-inch radius. We want to find the perimeter of a 60-degree slice. Um, so now you really don't have to draw the picture, but I think it is helpful to have a visual. Um, I'm just going to label it this way. This is approximately 60 degrees right here. The radius is 7 inches. We're wanting to find the perimeter of this slice of pizza. So we have three sides, right? We got the two sides of the pizza and then we have the crust. Well, we know the two sides. Those are uh, the radius. But we don't know the length of the crust because it is this curved, this arc right here of our pizza. So uh, we can use our arc length formula. All right. But before we can use our arc length, theta has to be in radians. So we need to convert 60 degrees to radians. 60 degrees ends up being pi over 3 radians. So when we plug that into our arc length formula, we have 7 times our angle in radians, pi over 3. Now, most of the time I would leave it in that form, but we're talking about a real world application here. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out because I don't know what 7, times, seven pi over 3 inches is. Um, so I'm going to multiply it out, 7 pi over 3. And that is 7.33 inches. So that is the length of our crust. We want the perimeter of the whole piece, so we need to add uh, the two straight sides to it. So we add 14 to that. So the perimeter of this 60 degree slice of pizza is 21.33 inches. Anytime we're dealing with real-world application, you need to put your units on there. 
Uh, and most of the time, you need to multiply it out. Okay. Questions? Pretty simple, right? You just got to remember to convert to radians. And I'm going to continue to say that because people continue to forget it. Let's look at another application. All right. Uh, I know we have a few track people in here, okay? Um, if y'all have ever watched a track meet, have you ever wondered why when they set up like the 200 or the 400, the runners don't all start at the same spot? They stagger them through the first curve. It has to do with arc lengths because with those two races, with the 200 and the 400, the runners have to stay in their lanes. Well, if you think about it, if you end up being this runner out here, I think it's pretty obvious just from this picture that you've got to run a little bit farther than this um, runner would have to run in this lane, okay, because of your distance from um, the center. So it all has to do with arc lanes. Uh, let's say that the running lanes at the track are one meter wide. The inside radius of lane one is 33 meters, and the inside radius of lane two is 34 meters. How much longer is lane two than lane one around one turn? So um, let's break down what all these words are meaning. I'm just going to label the picture here, okay? We're going to assume that that curve there is half of a circle. Um, I don't think it's... I think it really is a circle, I think it's more of just a curve on the actual track, but for, for this purpose we're going to assume um, that it is a uh, semicircle there. Okay. Or a big one, coming along. Uh, <clears throat> so they're one meter wide. Okay. These lanes are one meter wide. Uh, the inside radius, what that's talking about is if we labeled the inside, the center of this semicircle right here in the middle, the inside radius, so from the center to the inside of lane 1, is 33 meters. The center to the inside of lane 2 is 34 meters. Okay, and there's no significance in me labeling it in a different spot. I just wanted you to um, see the difference there. question is, if we go all the way around this curve, how much longer is the outside lane than the inside lane? So we're talking about the arc length here. We're talking about arc length. So arc length, we need to know two things. We need to know the radius. Well, you're going to give us the radii here. Okay. 33 and 34 are two radius measures. And we need to know the angle. Well, they didn't give us an angle. So let's think about the situation. Starting here, we're going all the way over here. What angle have we traveled to? 180, right? Half a circle is 180 degrees. In radians, how many radians are we talking? Pi, okay? So uh, lane one, its arc length is 33 pi. I'm going to leave it in those terms right now. Lane two, its arc length is 34 pi. We want to know how much lane, how much longer lane 2 is than lane 1. So how about we subtract 34 pi minus 33 pi. What does that leave us with? Pi, which is approximately 3.14 meters. So if you went out there, and like I said, I don't think that the relationship is this simplistic, but if that curve was a perfect semicircle, then the runner in lane two would be placed 3.14 meters ahead of the, the runner in lane one um, to remove uh, that discrepancy. Um, now, uh, that's for the 200. If they were doing the 400, you have to go through two curves, so they would double that distance um, because they have to go through two so, fun fact there, there is math in the real world, even in sports. Okay, one more type of application I want to look at here. I don't need you to write all this stuff down. I'm just going to talk through it 
um, but it's necessary to connect angular speed, okay? Angular speed is something that we measure in like revolutions per minute, okay? RPM, you all know where that comes from in cars. Um, it's probably the most common uh, time you've heard about that, revolutions per minute. But connecting that to linear speed, linear uh, meaning miles per hour, meters per second, feet per minute, things like that. Um, the key to this is um, the length of your revolution, okay? The length of your revolution. Um, it's your one revolution is equal to two pi radians, or um, that's the entire circumference. It's going to differ based on the problem, okay? So, I don't think that's called circumference, right? Circumference. So you do need to write this down right here, okay? Two pi radians is one revolution, okay? Revolution is just another term for the circumference. I still don't think it's called circumference, right? Is that an extra E in there? I think there's another E in there. Circumference, I don't know. Anyways, I'm usually good at the English stuff, but today I'm very interested. Okay, so let's look at a problem. We have a truck that has wheels that are 36 inches in diameter. The wheels are rotating at 630 RPM, or revolutions per minute. Let's find the truck's speed in miles per hour, because revolutions per minute doesn't really mean a lot to us. We don't really have anything to reference that against. Miles per hour means a little bit more to us. You know, we know the difference between 35 miles per hour and 65 miles per hour, okay? So, we're going to start, um, and most of my classes call these stoichiometry problems because they kind of end up looking like those problems in chemistry where you have to convert all the different units. Okay, so we're going to, if you kind of keep that in the back of your mind, I think it kind of helps you out as we're doing this. So 630 revolutions per minute is what we're starting with. And I always go to the end of the line of my paper and I put what I'm trying to end up with. So in this case, we want to end up with miles per hour. And I got to figure out how to get there. All right. Now, the easiest part is converting the time, obviously. Okay, going from minutes to hours is not that difficult. Um, how many minutes are in an hour? 60 minutes in an hour. So minutes were on the bottom, so I got to put them on the top so I can cancel them. That means hours goes on the bottom, which is good because that's where I want it. I want hours on the bottom. So minutes cancels. Okay, the minutes cancel. Um, and this helps some people. It doesn't help some people, but uh, when I get the units that I want, I circle them so that I know I don't have to do anything else with the bottom of this function or this expression. Okay, I'm just going to work with uh, trying to get revolutions to turn into miles. All right, so we've got to use this relationship right here. One revolution is equal to the length of my circumference. One revolution is equal to the length of my circumference. So, for this problem, thank you, Timmy. One revolution. Revolution was on top. I'm trying to get rid of it, so I got to put it on the bottom. What is the length of the circumference of these wheels? 36, 36 times pi. The diameter was 36, so uh, circumference is pi times the diameter. So all we have to do is 36 times pi. Now we do need those units right there. That's very important. Okay, the diameter was in inches, so we need to put inches right there. So now my revolutions have canceled. Still don't have what I want though. I'm trying to get from inches, I really want miles. I really want miles. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but I don't know how many inches are in a mile. So I'm going to have to, there's got to be an intermediate step in here somewhere. Okay, um, I do know how many inches are in a, in a foot. Okay, there are 12 inches in one foot. Inches were on top, so I put them on the bottom because I want them to cancel out. If 
Anybody know how many feet are in a mile? 52A. 52A. 5,280. 